So today uh, we are going to see uh, one of the API, which is very popular and a very famous API, uh, Pet Store. Okay, so this particular API is providing uh, different type of uh, uh, features or we can say functionalities, right? So then we will see how we can uh, add those APIs and how the document will be and how we can extract the APIs from the document. And uh, we will send different type of request in Postman. And also we apply uh, chaining as well as uh, we do some kind of testing. Okay, we will add some type of tests. And uh, this will support uh, two types of responses. One is JSON response and the other one is XML response. So uh, depends on our requirements. So some APIs will provide a response in the JSON format and sometimes the response will be in the XML format. So today we will see how we can validate JSON and also XML response. And sometimes you can see XML format. So then we need to add some more validation points. So we will see that. But how to access the pet store documentation? Okay, and this is the free API and which is provided uh, so many features internally. So let me show you how to access the documentation and uh, we'll see the Swagger document first and we will understand what is pet store and what are the different APIs are provided by it. And then uh, we will try to test them in the Postman tool. Okay, so now let me just go to uh, first documentation. Let's go to Google and just to search for uh, pet store. Okay, this is a URL of the documentation, petstore.swagger.io. And this is a URL and which is having uh, the Swagger documentation. So again, if I just look at this, uh, you can see here, these are all different API requests. And basically they have provided totally six types of APIs and we can call them as a models. Okay, and API response, category, pet, tag, order, user. These are the different models and each model is having a different type of request. So we can consider model is a kind of a functionality. So categories is one section, pet is one section, tag, order, user. These are the different models. So if I just look at here again, they have provided different APIs for their models. So let's say here, this is pet and which contains a different type of request post and put get and different type of post and put get request and uh, on the store also store this is also another type of model and which is also having four different type of request and uh, this is a user model which is also having different type of request so currently they have provided uh, three different type of models on the swagger document and rest of them are paid ones and we need to buy it and we need to generate some kind of api keys okay but rest of them we can access freely so let me show you how we can uh, extract these APIs, how we can understand this, and then we will test them in the Postman tool, okay? So first let us start with, uh, uh, we have taken one or two models in our API, okay? So user model especially have taken, so you can just go to the user model. This is your user model. And this model uh, will support XML response. So if you want need an XML response, we have to go to the, sorry. So we have to go to the pet model. This will give you response in the XML format. And this user model provide the response in the JSON format, okay? First, let us start with the uh, uh, JSON. Then we will discuss about XML response. So this is a user model. And if I just go here, and if you want to explore these APIs, right? We need to just click on this API. Let's say you have something called uh, create user okay and this is for create user update user delete user and uh, logs user into the system so log out current logged uh, in user session and get user by name and create list of users with given input array and create list of users with the uh, given input array there are multiple things are so we need to explore this api first so first let us start from the create user and we just click on this they will give you the information so this can only be done by the logged uh, in user. If the log user is logged in, then he will able to create another user. And uh, this is a description they have given. And uh, this is the body which we have to send. So this is just a syntax they will give you, but the data we have to update. They don't give any data. We have to update this data, right? So this is a request body. Okay, now we can just look at here. We have to send the request in application slash JSON format. 
and uh, can just look at this here response format application slash xml so this is the xml we have to select then we will get the uh, response in the xml format so let me just pass some data here okay some dummy data so it can also export directly here but if you want to access this what you can do is we need to click on the try it out and this is the button we have to click right so once you click on this this editor is enabled so here we can pass the data so request a body is allowing only json but response we will get in xml format and whichever format you want you can select here so here we have to pass some data let's say here i'm passing some data 1010 and username is i say john right so we can just give some dummy values like this and uh, email Uh, font is very smaller uh, please check it so let me just increase the page size okay so we can just pass some dummy data here and phone number okay and then click on uh, this format and then say execute okay so click on execute right so once you execute it now you can see here and it is generated some curl here curl is nothing but what we can import this curl in our postman directly okay and then uh, this is the response body in the xml format so whatever the id which we have given here the same id is captured here in the xml response right so this is a description successful operation and 200 is a status code so this is how we can just uh, explore the api in the swagger document so how we can import this API in our Postman? So to import this API in the Postman, we can just copy this curl directly after exploring your API here. You can just copy this uh, curl directly and then you can just import in the Postman. So go to Postman and here we have to create a new collection. So I'm creating a new collection here. Collection. And here I will name it as pet store and this is my collection name okay so inside this pet store collection we have to import that curl so how to import that curl yesterday we have seen select the collection go to import and here go to raw text and here we have to just copy the curl whatever we have captured in the exploration document here swagger we have to just copy it so that it will automatically import everything including uh, body request everything so once you specify, then say continue and then import. Yeah, now we can see this is a URL and this is the body section. And we have to just change the body and then we send the request. Additionally, we have to add some uh, pre-request script if you require and test also we have to add. So this is how we can explore the uh, Swagger document here and get the curl and then import that curl into your Postman collection. And that automatically get everything from the Swagger. But if you want to do manually, you have to understand this uh, description and all the stuff, and then we have to add manually. Suppose if you want to do this manually, what I have to do here, uh, they have provided the description. So slash user, right? So what is the post here? When you click on this slash user, slash user means we have to take this URL slash user that is a complete url and you have to copy this body here and uh, request type is app application slash json and response type is application.xml you have to select and all these options you have to select manually here okay so manually you have to select and then uh, you are able to create manually but instead of doing that if the swagger is directly available you can just explore this api at the same time get the curl from this uh, document and then import that curl in your postman so that is the easiest thing and once you save it it will ask you the collection type and then select the collection type in whichever collection you want to save and then say save so like this we can save the request okay so same thing uh, if you have a swagger document uh, this is the process normally we follow now we'll try to uh, test some api so from this so we already created one collection here uh, pet store json user model and these are the api requests i've taken from the user uh, apis from the pet store 
this is a module. We can consider this model is a module. So this is a one, okay. And here I have taken some requests, four type of request, and uh, we have added to the postman. So let's go to the postman. Now let me go through one by one. So how I have added and what are the tests I have added and how we have done the chaining also. So first we'll start with the create user. So take this request, create user. So if I just look at the create user and this is the URL, which is post request. And uh, here, uh, when you send this body, so every time we have to pass a different ID and different email address. Okay, so these are unique. So different ID, different email will be there for every user. So we have to generate them randomly every time. And uh, here I have generated this all the data dynamically at the time of sending the request. So to generate this data dynamically at the runtime before sending the request, we have to add that script in the pre-request script. Right before sending the request, I want to generate some data, user data. So go to pre-request script here. And uh, here I have added some code which will generate the random data. So what is the data we required here is ID, username, first name, last name, email, password, phone, and user test data. So these are the details which we required. So to generate this data, so you can just look at the data also. So ID is basically a number. So if I just look at the swagger also, you will know that. So go to create user, look at the data here. ID is number. They haven't put in the double quotations. That is a number. And user status is also number. And rest of all the data, including phone number, everything is a string format. So accordingly, we have to create the data. Now, let's go to pre-request. So pre-request script will execute before sending this request. So we have to keep all the code here. So to generate the random number in the JavaScript, we can write this statement. So there is a math library. Inside this, we take some predefined methods. And by using them, we can create a random number. So you can just uh, copy the syntax as it is. You don't need to remember. Or you can Google it. You can find so many things. How to generate the random number in JavaScript. So you can find so many things. So this statement will generate the random number. So how to generate the random string? So that we already seen in the last classes. So this particular statement will generate the random string. And I have added some prefix into this. So this is a random number. This is a random string. So here I'm setting the random number as environment variable, right? So I'm passing, uh, I'm creating this ID, username, first name, first name. These are all uh, variables I'm creating and rest of them are collection variable. This is the environment variable I created. You can also create this as a collection variable, but in the collection I have some more type of IDs are there. So it is conflicting. So that's the reason I created this as an environment variable. And ID, username, first name, last name, email, password, and email. Again, we take the random string here and uh, convert that as an email format. And this is a password. And uh, here, this is a phone number. And this is the user status. So user status, always it is a zero. So I'm just adding the hard-coded value. Even phone number also, I'm adding hard-coded value. And this random number I have used to generate the ID, OK? So like this, we have to create a variables. So now this request will take this particular data from the variables which we have created. So every time when you're sending the request, which will create a new set of data. So I just printed this random number, random string in the console window. For that, I have written console.log. So we can just remove it or else you can just comment it, not required. So this is a post request. And we don't need any authentication for this, but some requests we need some kind of authentication. So I have taken some APIs from here, whichever is not having any authentication, but otherwise we need to authenticate those APIs and we have to create an API key and so on. But I have taken a few API requests from here, which don't have any authentication required. Okay, so this is my create user, the first API request. Uh, this is a URL and this is the body. And I have taken this data from the pre-request script, which will create a variables. And what are the tests I have added? So again, once you created this user, right? So which will uh, having username, first name, last name, email, and this is the same data which is having. So if I just go to the test tab here, I'm just verifying the status code. Okay, so here uh, verifying the status code. 
एंड अदर रिक्वेस्ट के जस्ट लुक एट हियर गेट यूजर बाय नेम अपडेट यूजर बाय नेम डिलीट यूजर बाय नेम सो दीज थ्री रिक्वेस्ट रिक्वायर्ड नेम ऑफ द यूजर सो फ्रॉम वेयर वी विल गेट दिस नेम इन द फर्स्ट रिक्वेस्ट इटसेल्फ वी ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड द नेम इन द प्री रिक्वेस्ट स्क्रिप्ट वी ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड यूजर नेम हियर एंड द सेम थिंग वी हैव यूज्ड एज पार्ट ऑफ बॉडी सो वी विल यूज द सेम नेम फॉर अदर रिक्वेस्ट आल्सो फॉर गेटिंग द यूजर अपडेटिंग एंड डिलीटिंग यूजर so go to the test tab and here i have just put one validation which is 200 status code this is one request so let me just execute this and once you execute it so you will get the response in the json format so i'll show you another type of api which will return the xml format of response okay currently this is returning json format all right so this is how so whatever the uh, id is created here the same id will be shown in a message here which is 95 is an id actually okay so this is the response and uh, our test is also got passed status code is got passed now what this uh, st uh, what this request will be done it is creating uh, some environment variable so this is id is environment variable rest of all collection variables so let us see whether it is created or not go to the collection and go to the variables now you can just look at this Username, first name, last name, email, password, four user states. All of them are created successfully. And uh, environment variable it is also created. Go to environment, and here ID is got created. Okay, so this data we have to use for other request. Get user by name, get update user by name, delete user by name. And you can just remember this, which is created ninety five, right? So if I just look at the body, so the user ID is what ninety five. so user name is what the user name is automatically created in the collection variable if i just go to variables user name is this one something is created so by using this user name it will extract the data this is the first request we have sent now go to the next request get user by name get user by name so here we have to pass the first name as a parameter not user name first name so based on the first name it will retrieve the data from the user so whatever first name we created in the first request here at the same first name we are using and that we are taking from the collection variable again these two requests are chained together so first request is created the data and the same data i am using in the second request so if i just go to the parameters no parameters are required and parameter in the sense this is the parameter first name we have sent and uh, uh can just go to the directory test we don't need any body because this is a get request and test tab in the test we can see status code so let's try to execute this and this particular parameter or variable will be taken from the collection okay send it and the id is 95 right so we got the data exactly 95 is an id and this is the data we captured and this is a get request get user by name and again if you want to validate these fields you can add more number of tests in the test tab i have just verified only status code for now you can also verify this data the next request is what update user by name and here also we need to pass first name as parameter and uh, update means what we have to update the uh, details of the user so here again same request whatever the body we have sent along with the create user post request same body we have to copy paste here same details again so what are all things i'm changing here i just want to change something so whatever the details you want to change you can generate the data as part of pre request script i want to change email address and phone number and rest of the details by default you will get it from the collection variable only uh the email and phone number so these are the two fields again i'm regenerating here especially in this request so previously the phone number is uh, something called 1111 so now i'm just changing as a phone number here and also i'm randomly generating the email address so email address phone number i'm going to generate previously what is the email address so this is the email address and this is the phone number now i'm going to update this so to update this you need to pass the first name and then the same body and then go to the test and uh, status code is added status code validation and pre request script is only for email and phone number i'm going to change i'm generating this i'm just passing them in the runtime so so execute this put request 
and this will update the record. So now the same ID 95, it is got updated status is 200. So again, if you go back to the get user request and previously it was uh, 111, 111 is their phone number, something is email is there. So let me execute the same request once again. Now it will got changed here. So this email ID and phone number is got changed with the put request. And this is again connected to the first request. So whatever the variables we already created in the first request, same variables it is used. But again, newly we created two different variables here. And basically we are not created, we are just updating this. Email phone number with the new data, we are updating it. So this is update user request. Now go to the delete user by name. So here we have to pass the again, first name of the user. And this is the deleting request. For deleting request, we don't need to pass anything. Only the first name we will take from the collection variable. And uh, even pre-request script also not required. Directly go to the test tab. And here we verify the status code. And after completion of delete and request, we don't need any variables. So I'm just removing all the variables from the environment and also collections. I'm unsetting all the variables after completion of deletion request. Okay. So this is a delete request. Let me execute this. So everything is clear. So we can, there is a message here. This is actually user ID, which is deleted. And if I just go to the collection level, so you don't see any variables, everything is got cleared. Okay. So this is how we can just explore the Swagger document and get the curl from the uh, Swagger and try to import them in the collection, try to import them into your collection and then add required things. Like sometimes KPIs requires pre-request escape. Sometimes we need to add multiple tests. And once you add it, then you can run the entire collection at one shot. So select the collection and here we can directly run and select all the collections, say run. So once you execute it, it will execute all the collections in the sequence and everything is got executed. And if you want to run one, uh, one more time, you can just run it here and you can click on the view results. It will show you all the test points which are passed. Okay, so this is how we can just explore the swagger, import all the request into your postman, then required necessary pre request script and test, and then execute individual request first. And once everything is going fine, then you can execute entire collection at one shot. Okay, so here we can also export the results. So we can export the results in the JSON format. So you can just look at one option is here, click on this export results. And uh, then you can uh, browse any, any location. So this is the name of the uh, collection. And this contains only results which in the JSON format. Okay, so JSON format results will be there, but you cannot understand JSON. Later, we, I'll show you how we can generate the HTML report. So many times we generate the HTML report instead of generating JSON report. So you can just save it, which will automatically save the collection. It's not a collection, it is a result file. And if you want to save the collection, you can just click on the three dots and then you can say, click on the uh, export is there. So click on the export selection version and click on the export, then which will automatically save the collection. So I'm saving it. So on my desktop, I have saved my collection. This is my collection and this is my results. So like this, we can export the results and export the collection. So now, let us see how we can generate the documentation for the collection. So I have successfully created and executed. Everything is fine. So I want to make a small documentation on this particular collection on this request. So how we can make the documentation and once you create a documentation, how we can publish. So when you do publish, everybody will be able to access your collection. Everybody will be able to access. Everybody can import this collection to in their local postman tool. So how we can create a document and how we can publish this. So to create this documentation, simple what you can do is we can just click on three dots and you can see option called view documentation. Click on this view documentation. And here you can see the clear documentation of every request, whatever you created. So this is a post request, create user. This is the URL and this is the body you have to specify. And then click on the view more and this will give you detailed information of your body. And this is a get request and this is a put request and this is a delete request. So it will create a detailed documentation. 
So if you want to publish this, right? If you want to publish this documentation, you can still publish it, right? So again, there are multiple options here. So you can publish this document in whichever format you want. Most of the times we use either HTTP or in the curl format, okay? So you can select this, uh, the time of public publishing is also. So let me just get this document like this and then click on the publish. So once you click on the publish, and your documentation will be published. But again, it will ask you a few things here uh, before publishing on the public network. So currently it is, this is the documentation, right? So this is the documentation, this is the format it will ask you. So which format you want the documentation, which colors you want to put, everything it will show you. And again, this is the content and this is the URL and the styling process. So these things will be there by default. Later also you can change this. And once you click on this publish, so the document will be published. So now this is a published document URL. Okay, so you can just open this URL and then you will be able to see the complete documentation of your collection. So now everybody is able to capture this doc, everybody able to access this documentation. So here, this is published pet store API documentation. So everybody will able to access if you have this kind of a URL. So even in the Google also, if you Google it some type of APIs, you will see this kind of a documentation basically. Okay. And this particular documentation will be very, very helpful uh, to test the APIs. So you can just look at here and uh, create user. And then you can see post request URL and what type of body we have to send. And they have and curl if you want to curl. So you can also, they have also given the curl here. So you can just copy this curl directly and import in the postman collection. And here get request, put request, delete request. So everything is now documented and also it is published. Everything is published. Okay. Suppose you already have this kind of a documentation. Okay. Now you want to uh, run this particular collection in your postman tool. So what I have done here is I have exported, I have published this from my Postman. I already published it. Suppose you want to run this collection on your Postman tool. Okay, you want to run this collection on your Postman tool. What you can do, you can just open this URL. Okay, then immediately what you can do, you can just click on the run in Postman. So there is an option here. So if you click on this option by default, uh, it will get all the requests from this document and this will run on your postman. So let me just click on here, run in postman, right? So it will ask you, you do you want to run in the uh, postman for web or postman for windows? I'm just selecting the second one. Okay, I'm just clicking on open postman. So this will automatically importing in your postman. You can just look at here. It will ask you the in work in which workspace you want to run that collection. So I'm selecting my workspace and say import. Okay, now you can just observe here. So it is imported from my uh, document, right? Publisher document, here it is, here it is. This is another one. So now go to create user, select the body. Same thing will be there, pre-request the script, the test, everything will be exactly the same, no change at all. You don't need to change anything. You can directly run this collection from your postman. Okay, so if you have such type of document, so this type of document, so you can directly run this, in your postman directly. So you no need to again copy each and every kern. You no need to paste in your, uh, you don't need to import this collection or you no need to import this request in your postman, not at all required. Okay. So I have shown you two types of documents. So before testing, before starting testing, what kind of document we have to refer? Swagger. Okay. Before starting your testing, we have to explore all our APIs in Swagger. So Swagger is used for exploring API request and this is interactive document. This is an interactive document. Okay. So once you have done it, once you have imported all the APIs into your Postman collection, you have added all the requests, you have added all the test prerequisite and have it tested and executed, everything is fine. Then you have to create a documentation. Create a documentation and then you have to publish it. Okay, publish it. 
So then once you publish it, then uh, you will get the URL like this. And after getting this URL, after preparation of documentation, after preparation of uh, publishing, then uh, you will get this uh, URL after publishing. So once you have this URL, suppose somebody else has done this task and they have shared this URL to you. Now, if you want to execute this collection on your Postman tool, then you can do this option. So open this link and that link will open the documentation like this. And then just click on the run in Postman. This will automatically import this entire collection into your Postman tool and then you can execute. And this is done after at least once somebody is executed, somebody is tested, published, then you can do this task. Okay, so this is after completion of testing. So this documentation is created after completion of testing. So before uh, testing, we use Swagger document for reference. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is how uh, we can do it. And if you want to delete a specific string or specific ID, you know, you can just remove some statements here. Okay, so you can just go to delete user. Here we are deleting, right? So you can just remove some of the things. If you don't want to delete everything, you can just remove statements and whichever the variables you want to delete, you can just use only those statements, unset and rest of them still you can have in the collection. Okay. So this is a, a pet store uh, API. So let me just delete it, which is already there. And to delete this collection, you can just right click and then delete. Okay, so this is my pet store collection, which is giving the response in the form of JSON, JSON form of response. And this is the actual process we have to follow. Okay, we have Saga document. And sometimes we also have a static document. So we don't have Swagger document immediately. Sometimes you have a static document and then we will also consider that. Okay, in the tomorrow session, I will show you how the static document will be and then uh, Swagger. But initial level Swagger may not be available. So sometimes you have to write the test cases by using static document. Okay, so now let's see one more type of API and which will send response in the XML format. Okay, I'm sharing this URL, guys, so you guys can access this. You can directly import this collection on your machine and then you will be able to execute. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So now let me go to uh, another type of collection. Go to Swagger UI. There is one more uh, model here called user. Okay. And user, we can do different type of operations again. So we can say create user, log into user. Okay, and this is the user we have seen just now. We have to go to the pet. So this is the one. Okay, this will send response in the XML format. So user we already done. So go to pet store. So here this is a pet is another model and this will send the response in the XML or JSON format, whichever we need. Right, so let's see how we can uh, explore these APIs. So first of all, let us see how to add a new pet to the store. Okay, this is a post request how to add a new pet to the store. And this is the JSON uh, request we have to send. So in the JSON request, we have to pass something. Actually, this is a JSON request which will support both JSON and XML. But if you want to pass this request in the XML format, you can also select application slash XML. So this is the XML form of request. Request body is in XML format. And this API will support both, okay? If you want to test in JSON also, you can test the JSON format. And especially I'm going to show you XML format, especially for this particular API. All right, so this is the uh, XML format of request body. And here we have to change some fields like name, name of the pet, and some details we have to change. All are not mandatory. Some details we have to change. This is the request body in the XML format. And uh, if you want to execute this, you can just uh, click on try it out. And here we have to change something. And after that, uh, here XML we have selected and the response also we need in XML format. So here we have to select application slash XML type. And then when you execute it, then we'll get the response in the XML format. So you can just look at here. This is a response. This is a response in the XML format. And this is the curl which is generated. You can just look at here. This is the curl which is generated. And if you import this curl in your postman, so this will automatically import everything. 
this is a swagger document and uh, status code is again 200 this is a response and uh, we can also see what are the headers it is created all this stuff okay so we can use this information at the time of validation right so now let us see how we can uh, send this request how we can get the response and how we can validate the xml response so go to postman and here i have created one more collection pet store xml pet model so if i just look at here again i have taken four type of request one is adding new pet finding a pet by id updating existing pet details and deleting the pet so four requests so first look at the first one add new pet okay so add new pet so here uh, this is my request post request and if i just look at the body this is the xml body xml form of body right so here i provided some name and uh, name of the pet and uh, category uh, sorry this is the name of the pet and this is actually category so from here to here this is the category information and this is the name of the pet and other details are optional uh, not mandatory so that i have left them so this is available and for this request uh, whenever you send this request select this xml format here okay and uh, go to the test and here i put some validation points so status code this is the status code validation so now how we can put the validations on xml okay so when i send this request observe here i'm sending this request right so when i'm sending this request i got some response in the body this is a response body so the id is dynamically generated by the api itself so we don't need to create our own id so it will generate so this is the id of the pet and this is the name and the rest of the fields we have not provided so it is not uh, updated or anything so just id which is generated with this name so whatever name we have given here the same name is displayed in the response and the id is dynamically generated so this id we will use it for other request like for finding pet id by id updating and then deleting we use this id but in the validation i have put one validation here uh, this response contains the name right this is jimmy or not i just want to verify or you can verify anything in this xml data basically the data is available in the form of tags okay if it is an xml the data is available in the form of tags so we have to verify this data so simple thing what you can do is here we cannot directly do validation on the xml format so we have to convert that xml format into json format okay we have to convert this entire xml response into json format and then we will add the validation points okay in postman tool there is no direct option is available to directly test the xml body so we have to convert that into json okay but if you go with any other tools like SOPI, so there are some uh, predefined options are available to test the xml response directly without converting to json so here we have to create one test method you can just look at here i have created one validation method and this is a normal function i created not a arrow function so in this we have to convert this xml to json first of all we have to use one keyword called response body so this is a built-in keyword response body so what this will do exactly is xml to json this is a predefined uh, package which is available in postman so what this will do is xml to json this will convert xml response to json response okay so this will convert response from xml to json so but we need to pass one parameter called response body so after it is converting we will store that response in the variable and this is a json data variable and this is again in the json format so once it is converted xml is converted into json and then json response will be stored in this variable so once you get a json response you can easily do the validation so now in the json data where exactly the name is available inside the pet so pet is the parent tag you can just look at here inside the pet name is available so pet dot name that is called path so that path we have to specify pet dot name to equal to jimmy similarly if you want to verify some other fields also you can just write the path 
x array uh, json path correctly and then you can write it here and this is the one way we can do it okay suppose you converted this xml to json format and the data is there in the json format but uh, if you want to add this path you have to see the json format data right then only you will be able to understand which one is a parent tag which one is a child tag and so on right but by seeing this xml sometimes you may not able to identify because sometimes we have a complex xml so it is very difficult to find out the path so in those cases what i can do is we can just copy this xml response and there are some tools are available online you can directly convert into json format so you can just search for some tools xml to json converter online so you can just search for some tools like this xml to json converter and take any one tool right so okay i'm take i'm taking this particular tool you can just copy this here xml format now you are able to see the json data okay so once you get this json data then if you want to find the path for specific uh, fields or specific data to put validations then copy this json data and then use it one more tool json pathfinder so earlier we have already used this tool so json uh, pathfinder and uh, which will automatically generate the json path so i can just copy the entire json format so now if you want to capture this id data then what you can do you can select the id here this will automatically create a json path or if you want to check the status value if you want to extract the status value then here select this available so it will generate the json path so you can you make use of these tools or uh, if you are able to if you are not able to find manually and sometimes you may have complex json complex xml files in those cases these tools will be very very useful for us so this is a basically indirect process we do if you get an xml response and convert that xml into a json format and uh, in the json format we put the validation point so this is how we can test the xml response and uh, then this id right so whatever id which is generated so this id will be useful for other type of request so to use this id to other request what you can do we have to create a variable with this id so that i can use this id in another request again this is the chaining process so whatever id which is generated by first request we will try to use the same id in other request okay so how to capture this id into a variable i have written one script here so from this entire response first of all we converted this entire xml response into json response json data and then from this json data i'm capturing pet.id and uh, that value i'm assigning to the pet id so this is the environment collection variable which is created so two things i have done here one is validation of name and then we have captured this id into collection variable so that i can refer that id in another request okay so this is a way we have to validate xml and once you have done this then execute this and once it is executed so which is created a new id with the new details now go to the next request so you can just look at the collection variable and which is created pet id so this id is exactly used for rest of the request now go to the next request find pet by id and this is the url pet id we have to pass as a parameter and uh, this is a get request we don't need to pass any request body so directly go to the test so here i verify the status code this is the same thing again and uh, pet id we have to verify so when you send this request get request so you will get some data here right so for this request we are passing the pet id from the collection variable right collection variable we are passing the pet id which is captured in our previous request now once you get a response in the response we have to again check the same pet id the same id whatever we passed here in the response also we are getting the same id or not we need to compare that so whatever pet id i am passing as a parameter here in the response also we should get the same pet id so here we are taking from the environment uh, we are taking from the collection variable but here we have to capture this value after capturing this value then we will able to compare with this so go to the test tab here and here 
this is the XML response. So we have to convert this XML response into JSON data. And now we are comparing it. How to compare with this? First, extract the ID from the JSON data. So this ID I'm extracting here, this part, pm.expert. Uh, forget about this one, expert is a validation. So this is the one, JSON data dot pet dot ID. So this will get you the ID from the response. And this will get the ID from the collection variable. So now we need to compare this one and this one. For that, we use one method, pm.expect. The ID from the response should be equal to the ID from the collection variable. So this is a validation. If both are equal, then my test is passed. So this is the validation. Now let me execute. So now it is executed and it is got passed. So one is status code is got passed. The other one is pet ID is also same. So this is how we can again verify the XML response. Now go to the update existing pet details. So while updating, uh, we have to pass this URL and uh, we have to specify the pet ID as part of your request body. Okay, so as part of your request body, we have to pass the pet ID. So what is the pet ID you want to update? So this is your res, uh, request body. It is ex again, same as a uh, post request body, same copy paste. And here we have to pass the ID. And again, this is I'm taking from the collection variable because that is already created by first request, post request. So same pet ID I'm using. And if you want to modify some data here, you can modify. So previously it was Jimmy. So I'm just uh, updating this value as a Tommy. And this is the name I'm, I'm updating. If you want to update rest of the fields, you can easily update, directly you can update here. So I'm updating the name here and passing the pet ID, which is coming from the collection variable. And this is the request body of put request. So now go to the test data and status code validation. And this one is for pet name we're verifying because here we updated pet name here, right? So whether it is updated or not, we have to check. So after executing this request, so you will get response with the updated name. So the name is got updated. So now we need to verify this field, whether the name is got updated or not. So now go to the test tab. And here, along with the status code, we are also verifying this one. So XML to JSON, XML body. So we have to get the XML body into JSON format. And uh, from the JSON format, again, we are extracting the name that should be equal to Tommy. So this is the value we provided at the time of sending the request. So we have to compare with that one. So this is going to update the request, going to update the pet information. Name is updated. All right. So next one is delete pet request. Go to delete pet. So here, uh, pet ID, we created one variable, right? And once it is used, Everything is done. So finally, we have to delete that one. So I can just go to the test tab here. And then I'm unsetting the pet ID. Okay, so if you want to add another validation, you can just add one more validation for status code. Okay, so this pet ID uh, is provided. Okay, so in update request, pet ID should be passed along with the body here, not along with the request. Okay, so here in the body, we are referring. So how to get the collection variable? If you want to use collection variable inside the body, you have to put in the curly brackets. Or if you want to extract the pet ID inside the test, then you have to write the statement. In the previous request, we have written the statement, right? Find pet ID by ID. So like this, pm.collectionvariable.get. So this will get you the pet ID from the collection variable. Or if you want to refer the pet ID in the body, then you have to specify in the form of curly braces. Okay, so this is how we need to refer the collection variables or environment variables or whatever. Okay, so this is a deletion. So go to the delete request and then send the request. So this is a response and this ID is got deleted. And if I just go to the collection variable, we don't see any variables here. So this is how we can create a collection. Now let me execute the entire collection at one shot. Select the collection and click on the run and click on run again. 
Okay, so now everything is executed and see your summary results. All validation points are successfully executed. All right, so now I want to prepare the documentation for this. So how to create a documentation and how we can publish the document. Again, we have to click on these three dots and view documentation. And this is the documentation. And if you want to publish this, you can simply click on publish. And it will ask you the format, style and all those things. We have to just select them, and then publish. So this is a content URL styling, all these things will be asked. And then you can simply say publish. And once it is published, then URL is generated, open the URL. And now you will be able to see the entire collection exactly in the documented format. So now if you have this URL, you can directly run this collection on your Postman tool. Okay, so this is the URL I'm going to share. Okay, so publish pet store APIs. So one is in XML format, the other one is JSON format. So both I'm sharing it, okay. All right, so these are the two uh, APIs you directly will able to access. And uh, once you open this, you can directly click on this uh, run button, run in Postman. So that will automatically import this entire request into your Postman. Then you can make another copy on your Postman tool. Okay, so then uh, you will able to execute it. So you guys can try this your own. So currently I'm just trying to unpublish this. You guys can try this. Okay, so this is how we can work with the JSON response, so JSON and XML response. If you have an XML response, again, you have to convert that XML into JSON format, and then you can add validation points. Okay, so this is a pet store API. So you guys can practice this. So now, uh, let us uh, move on to the next one. So before moving to the next one, okay, let me just tell you. So what is the next uh, session plan is, I'm going to show you some APIs which is related to e-commerce application. Okay, e-commerce application APIs. So the e-commerce application is nothing but an open card application we have. So this is an e-commerce application. So let me just explore that application first. Let me show you some functionality and then we will talk about APIs. So just go Google it and you can say open cart. And this is an open cart. So shopping cart application. This is very popular and very famous e-commerce application. Right. So if I just go here, view demo. So they provided two applications. One is front end application. The other one is administration part. So if you go to any e-commerce application, so there will be two parts. One is front end. The other one is a back end. So front-end operations, back-end operations, we can divide into two. So normally, if you take any e-commerce application, so what are the activities we do in the front-end? Normally, what are the activities we do in the front-end? As a user, I can register an account and I can log into my account and then I can search for the products and then I can add them to the cart and we can delete or delete the cart or else I can order for the product. So these are the common activities we do on the front-end. Similarly, and the administration side also, uh, what are the admins can do? They can add so many products, they can see the orders, and they can see the status of uh, uh, ordered products, delivered products, and customers' information they have to maintain, reports they have to generate. So a lot of administration activities will be done on the backend side. So this is the overall functionality of the e-commerce application. So every e-commerce application also works based on the APIs. For every activity, there is corresponding API will be there. For every activity, whatever you do on the application, there will be corresponding API will be triggered. So the APIs will exactly perform the job. Okay. So even front-end application and back-end application also, there are so many APIs are there. So to access those APIs, okay, we have to install this application. If I, if I access this application through online, you cannot access the APIs. So this is your front-end application, but the APIs are internally integrated with this application. So you cannot access any APIs from the 
UI application because they are available in the backend system. So we have to go to the admin application. So go back to the admin. So this is administration. So I'm just logging into my admin application. So here, uh, my username is demo demo. Everybody can access this application. So I'm just providing demo demo. Click on the login. Now I'm logging into my administrator application. So here you can just go back to the system and uh, users, you can see user groups. You don't see any API kind of information. So there are separate users will be there for APIs. Okay, so they have not provided uh, such information here. The APIs information they have not provided here. So we have to create an API user. So then only we will be able to access OpenCart APIs. Okay. So for, we can use those OPS to perform the different activities on the application. Through API, we can do it. So they have not provided anything on this uh, demo applications. So now what we have to do is we have to download the complete application. We have to install it on your local system. Then we will be able to access the APIs. Okay. So I will show you step-by-step -step process of installing this application and get ready with this application today. And tomorrow we will discuss about what are the APIs are provided, how we can test those APIs, how we can put the validations, all those things we will discuss tomorrow. So let me show you how we can download this application and how we can install on your machine. And it is very, very useful. It is better to have this application on your local system so that you can also use it for web testing. Or if you're practicing Selim or any automation, you can use it. And also you can do the API testing. So for both the purposes, this application will be very much useful. So I show you now how we can download and install this application on your local system. So I have created one small document. So you need to go to the document and uh, then you will be able to install. So let me show you the document. Open card setup. Okay, so this is a document you have to uh, follow. So I'll show you step-by-step -step process and uh, install this and get ready with this. Then you will be able to access the API. But in the real-time scenario, this will not be the case. Okay, in the real-time scenario, first APIs will be ready, then UI will be developed. Okay, so UI you don't see, UI will come later after some time. But initially, the APIs will be developed by the developer and you will keep testing the APIs and parallel the UI development will be happening. So once the UI development is happened, once the UI development is done, so by the time your API testing is also completed, then the APIs, whatever the APIs are tested, so those APIs will be integrated with your web application. So that's how the process will happen in the real process, in the real-time environment. So first APIs will be developed, APIs will be tested, then web UI will be developed, and then web UI will be tested after integration is done. Okay, because if you want to work with the web UI, internally API should up and running, right? Then only we'll get the right functionality. So that's a prerequisite. But here, this is already developed application. So if you want to access the OpenCart APIs, we need a specific user. We need API user. We have to create that only in the administration application. So that is the reason we are going to install this. Otherwise, this is not required because only for admin user, Okay, we need to create an admin user. So for that API user, not only admin user, we have to create a separate user for accessing APIs, open cut APIs. So for that reason, only we are installing this application. Otherwise not required, okay? So let me show you how to install this. First, we need to go to this location. This is the URL. So if I just go to this URL, let me open this another tab. So this is the URL from where we can download this. So how we can download it? So in this, you can just click on this, download and host your, uh, it is giving four versions. So I think uh, the recommended version is this one. So the latest version, there are some features which are disabled. So I recommend to get this version 3038. Okay. And click on this previous religious link. So then you will navigate it to uh, another page where you can see all the stuff. Okay. So if you already have this application with you, so don't do again it, okay? So let it be there, right? So this is the these are the different versions are available. So you can just download this one. Three, there is a lot of difference between these two versions, guys, okay? So I don't recommend this four because there are certain functionalities they have disabled. So just go with the 3038. 
So click on this button download and it will start downloading uh, your entire application in the form of zip file. So you can see here, the zip file will be downloaded. I'm stopping here, I already have. So once you get a zip file, you have to extract the zip file and uh, it will be shown just like a folder. So let me show you, already downloaded. And this is a folder, open cart. And uh, you have some version number also, you have to remove that version number, okay? So then what is the next thing? We have to download the first step. And the second step, to install this application, we need two components. One is we have to uh, install Apache. And the second thing is what we need to have MySQL. So these are the two components. Apache is for running the web, uh, web applications. To run the web application on the server, we need Apache. So that we have to install. The second thing is, every web application internally have database, right? So the database is MySQL. So internally, this application will use MySQL database. So these two are should be there. So these are the two prerequisites. Again, to install these components separately and integrating the web is very, very complex process. So to simplify that, we have a tool called example. So in, to install this example tool, by default, you will get everything. Apache, MySQL, PHP, everything you will get by default along with the exam. So you have to install exam tool to get Apache, MySQL, and PHP. These are three components which is required to install this application. So from where we have to download this exam, you can just go to this link. Okay, just go to this link, open this link. And here you can find exam. So you can just download. So there are again three versions are there. I again recommend this particular version 7.4.29. Okay. So because compatibility is very, very important. And whatever version you are downloading here, that should be compatible with the exam also. So go here and download this one. So 7.4.29. So don't go with the latest versions. Go with this one because this is a compatible with the open cut older version. So 7429, so click on this download, which will download one executable file. And this will also support Mac machine. So if you are working on Mac machine, you can also download the same thing on your Mac machine, okay, example. So once you get an executable file, then you have to just start installing that. So here I have already downloaded, just click on the installer file, it will start installing the exam. So you need to go to the steps, I have captured all the screenshot, you can just click on next, 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 and it will install. So this is the location where exactly exam will be installed and uh, go through all the steps and it will take some time to install everything. And finally, you have to just say finish. So once you finish, then your exam will be installed and uh, you can open the exam control panel. So to open exam control panel, once your installation is done, you can just search for exam. You can search for exam. You can see here, this is my control panel. So I'm opening my control panel. So this is exam control panel. So from here, we will able to control all the components of exam, like which will come along with Apache, MySQL, FileZilla, Mercury, Tomcat, so many other components by default you will get along with the exam. But in our application, we need only three, Apache, MySQL, only two components we required. Okay, only two components, Apache and MySQL is required, right? So once you get an exam, then we can start installing open cart open cart application so far we just install only exam so why we have installed exam because we want mysql and then apache so these are the two things we require to install open cart application so to install once you have installed this exam application now prerequisites are satisfied and then we have to start installing open cart application so to to install the open cart application we have to follow this step step by step open cart installation the first thing is what whatever the open cut application we have downloaded okay and here this particular folder we have to remove the extension okay so only open cut folder should be there in the open cut these are the files directly copy this folder wherever your exam is got installed so my exam is installed in my c drive you can see the folder name also okay so just go to the folder and here you can see something called hd docs in the HD docs, you have to place. So here I already placed here, open cut. Okay, this is the first step. So copy the open cut folder, whichever you downloaded in the step one, 
into this location. Carefully check this location. Many people will do mistake directly. They can copy in the exam folder. No. In the exam folder, we should go to HD docs and there you have to copy. And while copying, remove the version number. Okay. So only the folder name should be just open cart. That's it. Right. This is the first step. Once you copied this, then you will see the open cart folder. So you can just rename the open cart means you have to just remove the version number. So now we can see the folder name like this. After that, you have to go to the location. In HD docs, we put the open card folder, right? In the open card folder, there is another folder called upload. So you can just go to open card and upload. You can see here. So in the upload folder, in the upload folder, you can see config.php. But uh, in your case, the file name will be like this, config-dist.php. You have to rename this file to config.php. So I already renamed here. That is a one place. The second place is what you need to go to in upload. Again, you need to go to admin tab, admin. So go to admin and here also you need to rename config.php. So, but initially you will have this name, config-dist.php. So these two file names you have to rename with the config.php in these two locations, okay? And once you have done, then you have to configure the database. So XAMPP is already installed MySQL. It is already there, but you have to create the database in it. And you have to associate the database with the web application. So for that, we have to do this step. Connect to the database and create the database. So now we need to open this URL. So when you open this URL, you will able to see MySQL database. So currently I'm not able to see because my exam server is not running. You have to start these two services. So click on the start button, Apache and MySQL. So once it is started, then only you have to start installing your OpenCart API. So OpenCart application. So when you start working, when you start uh, installing this OpenCart application, by the time your exam server, these two components should be up and running. Okay. Then, so once you open this particular step, this one, it will connect to the database. So this is my database of that application. So here I already created one database called OpenShop, which contains so many tables. These are the tables are referred in your application. So now how to create this database here? By default, you don't see this. You have to create your own database. So to create your own database, we already opened this link. Then we have to create a new database. The database name is open shop. This is the database name which we have to give in. And how to create the database, I have given the steps here. See the screen. So we need to click on the create database and then we will be able to create. I'll show you. So here, go to the database section. And here we have to provide the database name. I'm just providing some dummy. And here we have to select collection type collection and then create. So this will automatically create a new database here. Just like this, you have to create an open shop database. Okay, I'm just de uh, deleting this database. Okay, so this is a database which I created. So whatever databases I created, I just want to delete the database. One second. databases and here it will show you all the databases list and I'm just selecting this and then I'll try to drop. Okay, so you have to create a new database which is open cart here. So once it is created, the next step. So I have given all the screenshot here. Go to the databases section and here open shop, collation and then create. So once it is done, your database creation is done. So now we need to open this link, localhost open card. So once you click on this link, then you will see this screen. So here you have to click on the upload link. Then uh, it will, once you click on the upload link, then you will able to see this window by default. Okay, I have given the link also. When you click on this upload, this link will be opened automatically in the next tab and then you will see this window. So just click on the continue here. And uh, here you can see, uh, some options, right? So all the options should be by default selected. So if something is got uh, error here, something suppose by default, you will not get any error. 
So if you have any error here, then uh, you need to uh, do this setup in the exam because as, uh, in the previously I have installed the latest version of exam, latest version of open kata. So that time I got this error, but after shifting, after shifting, after shifting to these two versions, open cut version, exam version. So the compatibility is fine. So I didn't get that error. So no problem. So you will not get that error. Definitely. So all the components will be successfully installed and just go to this step. Yes. So here, all the components, it should, uh, all components should be green color. Tick mark should be there, right? Suppose if you are using some different versions, this component will fail. So that's the reason I'm suggesting to install the proper version. Okay. Suppose if it is getting failed here, the resolution also have given here, the solution for that. And if you're getting the below error, GD is off, then you have to do the below step. So we need to open the exam control panel. So we need to go to config. There we have to enable the statement extension equal to GD. It's not important, but if you still get an error, you can resolve this. Go to Apache config. And here we need to go to PHP admin. And here uh, you can see extension equal to GD is there, right? So we need to search for it. Let's say extension equal to GD. See here in the PHP, this is the actual comment. Oh, semicolon means comment. Okay, by default, it will be commented. So you have to uncomment that statement. So that is a solution actually. But you will not get this issue anyway. So no problem. You can just ignore this. Okay, so I can just close this. Right, so once you have done it, then it will show you all the tick marks like this. Then proceed next, click on the continue. And now here we have to provide the database connection details. So now our database is already created. So now we need to provide the connection between our application and the database. So if I just click on this, provide the database, and if you click on this continue button, so then you will navigate to another screen. So here you have to provide the username is root and by default, it will be there or else you can just provide as root database needs open shop and these fields by default populated, you don't need to change anything and don't give any root password and let it be there. And here you have to give username and password. These are the details you have to provide. So just give some admin admin or demo demo, whatever you want, but you have to remember them and then give some dummy email address and then say, click on the continue. So once you provided this database connection, then installation is completed, right? So then you have to go to this location after then you have to delete the install folder. So in upload, then you can see something called in upload, you can see something called install folder here. I already deleted that, so you cannot see. So this folder will be there in install. So you have to delete that folder. So with this, we have successfully completed installation. Now in the next step, uh, install folder you have to delete and after that you will able to access your application so now i am trying to access my application from my local system so open this uh, the next step this is a url because you are install your application in the local system so we have to give the local host or you can provide your ip address your local computer ip address also you can provide now this will open your web application so this is your front end application which is installed on your local system and we don't need this one. So we need admin application to create an API user. So for that, what you can do, we have to just open another one. So another URL. So this URL will open the administrator. So we need to open this in another tab. So let's log in. So I have given admin admin as a user. So I'm just creating admin admin. So now I have successfully logged into my administrator account. So here, you should able to see something here system users now you can see this is the option you will able to see so this option you will get only if you install this application on your local machine and if you're trying to access this uh, online application open card demo application you will not get this that is a difference that's the reason we cannot use it so just go to this open card application sorry let me use another browser. Open cut. Okay, so if I just go to administrator, open cut application, they have provided this. Okay, so they have installed in their local, their own servers. 
So when you're trying to access this admin application, you will not able to see the, you will not able to see the uh, API option here. Under users, you can see only user groups. You don't see the API here. So you cannot uh, test the any APIs for this application. So that is the reason we have to install this application on your local system. So once you installed, you will able to access it. Okay, so you will able to access it and you will able to create a API user. So now I'll show you how to create an API user. It's very simple. So let me try to access the our application. Just a second. Okay, so let me show you how to create an API user on your application. So first of all, open the administrator application. So this is the link we have to use to get the admin application. Go to Chrome browser and then opening my admin application. So I'm just logging into this admin, admin, click on the login. So now I successfully logged into my application. So here you will able to see the API option under users, under users, you can see API. So open this API. And by default, you see only default user here. In your case, you can see only default user. So we have to create our own user now. So how to create a new user? I have already created a demo user. If you want to create a new API user, you have to click on this plus button. And here you have to give some name. So I'm giving some name called demo one, two. And API key we have to generate here. Okay, so after providing API username, just click on the generate then automatically this API key is generated. This is very, very important for us to access OpenCart APIs. Okay, this key is required to access all OpenCart APIs. And after that, you have to enable this. Okay, once you enable, and then once you generated this, go to IP addresses section. And here you have to add your at least one IP address from where you want to access this IPS. Okay, when, uh, from where you, are, you want to access the APIs. So that location you have to provide. So you are trying to access your APIs on your local machine. So you have to add your local IP address. So how to add here, just click on the plus button. So here you have to add your local IP address. So how do, how we will know that? Just open the command prompt or terminal, just execute this command, IP config. So this will give you the IP address, IPv4 address. This is the address which we have to add here and then save it so we provided user information api key is generated after clicking on this generate api key is generated we enabled it then also we provided ip address then save this that's it so this is how we can just create a api user so this much of setup you have to do to access open cart apis so once the setup is done till here then you're able to access open cart apis Okay, we have done the setup, but where we can get the documentation, API documentation. So for that, I'm going to share one URL. You can just search for open card API documentation. Open card API documentation. So in this, you can find. So this is a URL where you can get all the APIs information. So open card. This is a static document. Okay, we do not have any swagger. Open card API documentation. Okay, open card API documentation. So now we need to go through this documentation. So what is the documentation they have given? We have to understand. So they have given the prerequisite here itself. So for using open card API, you should enable it previously via admin part of your site. We already done this step. We went to your system users API and you will see the predefined user called default. So we have, we are not using default user. We have created a new user and we also generated the API key there, right? We status is enabled, right? And also we have added one IP for that user. So this step is already done. So prerequisite we have already done. And these are the API URLs actually. So they have given some examples here. And actually they have given some Python script here. We have to extract the data from here. So this is actually generated key. And this is the URL which we have to send. This is the body of the request. 
okay and the login api and the currency api cart api mainly we are going to work on cart module so how to add product to the cart how to edit the product in the cart how we can update the card, how we can remove the card. So these are the operations we are going to do through API. So these are the URLs already given and the body also they have given here and some description also they have provided and uh, they have given some sample APIs here. But uh, yeah, so all APIs we cannot test, but some APIs uh, we need a full access of the open cut application. But most of the APIs we will try to add and we will try to complete. So this is the documentation guys. Okay. So once you have installed your open cut application, you have to create an API user and get environment setup is ready and then go to this documentation. So these are all prerequisite. Okay. So we have to first install open cut web application on your application. So only then only we'll able to access the API. So then we need to create API user is required. These are the prerequisite and then we will able to go through this documentation tomorrow and we will try to create different type of APIs and see how we can test those APIs. Okay. So that is the plan for tomorrow and tomorrow session, we will finish this. Okay. We will try to add different open cut APIs and we will try to test them. We'll do chaining process. And also we will try to create a documentation. We will publish that API collection. And after that, I will also show you how to generate the report, HTML report for that collection and uh, how we can run the collection, multiple ways of running the collection. Within the postman, we will know how to run the collection. But if you don't have a postman in the command prompt, I want to run, right? Uh, I want to generate the report, HTML report, how we can do that, right? How we can run the collection through Jenkins. In the Jenkins also, we can run the collection. So different ways of running the collection. So that also we will see tomorrow. Okay. But before that, you guys should ready with the application. You have to install that application and whatever things I have mentioned, I will share this document also. So whatever document I have shown you installation document, I'll provide this document and go through each and every step properly and then try to install and get ready with this. Okay. Tomorrow we will continue and test this kind of KPIs. So in the real time environment, this is the actual process, but you will not get any UI, but API user you have to create for that developers will provide the uh, requirement and accordingly you have to create required things to access the API. Like sometimes the API key is required. Okay. Sometimes you need some kind of a token. Sometimes you need some kind of authentication. So those are all information will be provided by the developer. Accordingly, you have to do this to access the APIs. Okay. So. That is for, uh, that's all for today's session. I will just stop it and get all the things ready for tomorrow's session. And uh, tomorrow we will continue this. Okay. Yes. I'm just stopping here. We'll continue tomorrow.